watching News 3, the Southern Illinois News Leader, live from WSIL-TV in high definition. News 3 starts right now. Cleanup underway tonight after Tuesday night storms leave their mark across Southern Illinois and Southeast Missouri. We have continuing coverage of the wild weather's impact across our region tonight. Good evening. Our new crews spread out across the area tonight to bring you stories of survival and recovery after Tuesday's horrifying storms. We know of one death in White County tonight and another in Perryville, Missouri, and we'll take you there just ahead. Yeah, but first we want to get a better understanding of the scope of the damage. Earlier today, we rode along with Black Diamond Aviation to get a view from above at the shocking extent of the damage. This is over Crossville in White County. This home just leveled. The trees below twisted and chewed just like toothpicks. The width of the twister here appears to be about a quarter of a mile wide. The tornado's path was clear. Another look at a large stand of trees pushed over like corn stalks. In the open field, you see the twister's path littered by debris. We move into Franklin and Perry County. In Elkville, the town's baseball fields are trashed. More homes in Elkville just shredded by the powerful winds. A lone farmhouse, the building and its contents just tossed into the open fields. Another building knocked to its foundation. Large parts of the roof tossed into the farm field for hundreds of yards. Another view of the force of the tornado. And this home in the Ava area, the front of the home just smashed. Then behind the home, you see more trees twisted in every direction. The storm generated nearly 20 reports of tornado damage as the path from above appears to show. Let's take you now to White County, where we had the only tornado death in southern Illinois. It happened in the community of Crossville, just north of Carmi. News 3's Brandon Richard shows us what authorities say happened and the damage left behind. This is where officials say a 71 year old man died after last night's tornado came churning through. He lived in this home here behind me and notice all of the debris scattered across this field in front. That is where authorities say they found his body. Today, family and friends gathered at what's left of the home Tom McCord shared with his wife, Debbie. Authorities say Tom tried to get into his house when the tornado hit last night, but he didn't make it. The storm picked him up and threw him 40 yards across this field. His loved ones remember a man they say everyone admired. Tom was well liked, just a nice guy, really a nice guy. <laughs> The tornado left a path of destruction, stretching from south of Crossville to the east. It damaged and destroyed several homes and ripped this home from its foundation. You see things like this on TV, but until you actually see it in person, it you know just kind of overwhelms you a little bit. No word on the cost of damage the tornado caused, but folks here obviously have a big mess to clean up and will be cleaning up for quite some time. Reporting in Crossville, Brandon Richard, News 3. In Franklin County tonight, severe weather blew over one house in Royalton. Fortunately, no one was home at the time. News 3's Evie Allen was there moments after the disaster last night. And Evie, I understand you met with the family today. Yes, that's right. I did, Carolyn. The family of three actually took shelter at a relative's house in town. When they got back, the house was no longer standing. It had disappeared. Now this morning, homeowner Autumn Byrne found pieces of her home, clothing and food thrown everywhere. Family and friends spent the day helping them look for anything that can be salvaged. During the storm, the family took shelter at Autumn Byrne's mother's house in a storm shelter. When she got back, this is what she saw, and all she could think about was her dog and her cat. My mom was saying, um, let me know when we get close to your house because I get kind of thrown off on the driveway. And she was like, well, this is your driveway right here, but where's your mailbox and where's your house? And I was like, it's gone. There was nothing, no walls, no nothing. And it was like shock. 
Thanks to a friend, their dog Buddy was found in a wooded area. Autumn says she is just grateful that everyone was okay. Now the family was able to salvage some clothing and the American Red Cross has stepped in to help. Now at 630, we'll hear more from the family about their devastating loss. In Royalton, Evie Allen, News 3. All right, thanks, Evie. We'll have much more on last night's storm and impact in a moment, but we want to get right over to Jim now. Yeah, and a look ahead as forecasters, we're always moving on to what is next. And what is next for us is much more quiet weather, but much cooler weather. And you felt it all day long. Our high temperatures, in most every case, came at midnight. Temperatures have been falling through the day and will fall quickly this evening. Harrisburg at the middle school already reporting down to 45, 47 in Carbondale. Dongola's at 51 and Poplar Bluff at Three Rivers still reporting 54 degrees. Everyone now reporting clear to mostly clear skies. Maybe a couple of fair weather clouds around for another hour or so. And then I think clear the rest of the night. A light breeze possible uh, as well. It looks like a low temperature uh, around 33 degrees. Pretty close to normal for this time of year. Something we've not seen a lot of this winter. Tomorrow, a lot of sunshine. Some fair weather clouds in the afternoon. But once again, close to what we expect. 53 or so for a high, but then another little cold front expected to move through tomorrow night. And I think by Saturday morning, we could see temperatures below freezing again. So we'll run those numbers down for you in the forecast that's coming up in just a few minutes. Jim, thanks. Now to Jackson County, where the sheriff's office has completed a preliminary damage assessment. 46 homes took damage, with 12 considered a total loss. An unknown number of cars and other structures also suffered damage. Four Jackson Countyans got treated at a hospital for injuries from flying debris. Doctors have released them tonight. And now the tornado would cross the Mississippi River near Rockwood and move toward the northeast, hitting Ava and Virgins hard. Meteorologist Nick Housen got a first-hand look at the damage this morning. Cleaning up belongings, strung out into neighboring fields, and going through valuables and anything that can be salvaged was how these people in northern Jackson County spent the day. Trees snapped, pieces of what was once a home driven into the ground, and buildings and houses knocked off their foundations. Jeff Wisely was at work when the storm hit his home. Uh, I get the phone call from my neighbor who says, Jeff, you need to get home. Uh, your, your house has been severely damaged uh, and it's, it's urgent that you get home. Wednesday morning, Wisely was thankful he wasn't home, looking over the damage to his house and his garage that collapsed around his prized classic car. He says it's a very emotional process. Overwhelming of where do, where do I begin the game, where do I start the day, and, and who do I need to call, and you know, that sort of thing. It's, it's a, a big deep breath of worry and frustration and sadness and and uh, some joy that I'm okay but just down the road one of Wisely's neighbors had their mobile home pulled off the foundation and what seems like a little luck combined with smart decisions all survived and no major injuries were reported well I will definitely look at uh, uh, thunderstorm warnings and watches on a whole different level and with a whole new respect for the power of mother nature in Jackson County, meteorologist Nick Housen, News 3. Meantime, farmers in Jackson County spent the day assessing the damage to their crops destroyed by last night's tornado. And News 3's Ronnie LaForge joins us live in Virgins, where at least three farms suffered major damage there. Ronnie, how bad is the damage and have crews there started cleaning up? Carolyn, this is uh, just unlike anything I've ever seen before. Not just the path of this storm that left uh, destruction here in Virgins, but also just the community's outpouring of support. If you look over here in this field, if you can see it, it's kind of dark outside right now, um, but there is just debris scattered for miles. Now here's a look at some aerial footage captured earlier today where you can see several farms in Virgins that were just flattened. Now this is the time of year where farmers are transporting last year's crops to sell, but the farmers in Virgins unfortunately have their harvested crops scattered in the fields. Tama Weil was in her hallway when the tornado hit, wearing a helmet and felt the tornado shake her house. But it wasn't until she walked outside she realized just what the tornado had done. You could hear the roar. You know, they say it sounds like a train. It was a big roar and the house shook a little bit. We heard things flying around and breaking some windows, but it went by so fast. We thought surely it didn't do anything. And then, you know, you walk out here in the dark and devastations. 
Yeah, she and her husband lost eight sheds around their home that were full of tools and tractors, but luckily they only had minor damage to their house. Now, Wild tells me that friends and family have been helping them clean up since the storm moved out. Now, there's another farm just right over here. If you look off to my right, if you can see it, it's kind of dark outside once again, uh, but there's just, it's just an acre away, and that was also flattened by the tornado. But everyone at these farms near Wild made it out okay. Now, these farmers say that they do have crop insurance, and they are, you know, they have insurance for their equipment as well, but they're asking for your thoughts and your prayers this evening as they plan to rebuild. Live in Virginia's Ronnie LaForge, News 3. An Elkville church is taking donations for families in their community who were hit hard by the tornado. God's House of Worship on South 6th Street put out a sign saying it was accepting donations and spreading the word by calling friends within the community. By this afternoon, people were already dropping off clothes and personal hygiene items. Those people lost everything. And uh, if we can help them out in any way, whatever we can get as donations, we want to be able to give. Well, the church says they'll be taking donations for as long as they are needed. If you'd like to donate, just look at your screen here. We have all the information there. You can drop items off at the church during the day at 406 South 6th Street. That's in Elkville. Or call the pastor, David Snur, at the number you see on your screen. Coming up at 6, we head back to Perryville, Missouri, where one person died, dozens of families lost everything in last night's wild weather. The first of West Frankfurt business owner detained by immigration will get to go home. We'll have the very latest on his case when News 3 at 6 returns. For breaking news and weather anytime, News 3 is always on at WSILTV.com, on your mobile device and social media. A West Frankfurt man who spent nearly a month detained by federal immigration agents is on his way back home tonight. An immigration judge granted bond to Carlos Hernandez Pacheco this afternoon during a hearing in Missouri. News 3 was the only local media outlet at the Robert A. Young Federal Building in St. Louis when Pacheco walked out, hugged a friend, and then hopped in a limo to ride back to West Frankfurt. Now, Carlos did not want to talk on camera today. Friends tell News 3 he just wanted to get home and see his family. ICE agents took Pacheco into custody on February 9th. Family and friends told us at the time Carlos had been trying to gain legal status in the U.S. for nearly a decade. Today, Pacheco appeared via video from St. Louis into a Kansas City courtroom where his lawyer was. The hearing ended at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Then friends posted the $3,000 bond and Carlos walked out around 3.30. Stay with News 3 in the coming days for updates on Pacheco's case. Well, what a difference a day makes. Just take a look at this scene of the Gateway Arch our photographer captured in St. Louis today. Well, the sunshine we saw today stick around for a few days. Jim's forecast is up next. Putting accuracy first, this is News 3 Weather. Three waves of storms. We saw all three of them, one in the morning, not as much severe weather with that one. The one last evening, uh, certainly uh, severe weather across the region. And then this morning, some very strong storms. I saw several reports of wind gusts topping 60 miles per hour across southeast Missouri. There was some hail again uh, this morning in southern Illinois. And now those storms continue to move away from us. The line is moving through the southeast right now. We've got lightning detection and display on. You can see a lot of lightning in this line and occasionally some warnings being uh, posted by the National Weather Service offices. It looks like it's going to be a pretty bumpy night uh, for the folks uh, across Georgia, southern parts of Alabama, just about to move out of Mississippi and the Carolinas, seeing uh, some severe weather, a little more uh, different uh, for them. Uh, they don't see as much in the way of severe thunderstorms on the other side of the mountains. Uh, kind of a testament to just how strong this system was. And part of the strength came from the difference in temperatures and the clash of jet streams and we're seeing some of that difference in temperatures now. Temperatures have been falling all afternoon long. We're all at new lows. 46 right now in Mount Vernon, 49 in Marion, 54 in Paducah, and in Poplar Bluff and Sykeston. Murray is still reporting 56 degrees. All of those numbers coming in from the local airports. Now we check in with one of our weather net sites, uh, Marion at the junior high, 46 degrees. The dew point has been on a nosedive. This is very dry air moving in this evening as well. It's one reason the skies cleared out real quickly this evening. 
It was beautiful blue right around sunset. Uh, see a lot of stars around tonight uh, as well, but it is a little breezy out there. Northwest wind showing up uh, 15 to 20 miles an hour currently, and you can see the big gust coming in when the line of storms went through this morning in Marion at the junior high, 51 miles per hour and also just about a half inch in that rain gauge for the day. Satellite imagery, we did see a few clouds around. They were kind of here and there at times. Now, southeast Missouri, a lot more in the way of clear skies during the day and for all of us, clear skies. But you can just see back up the flow. There are a few clouds around. We might see a few, especially in the evening. And I think again tomorrow afternoon. Interesting what we're looking at tomorrow. A little bit of a push of warm air ahead of the next cold front. But as that cold front approaches in the afternoon, I think we'll see an increase in fair weather clouds. Then that front's expected to move through tomorrow night. And by the time we get into Friday morning and Saturday morning, for that matter, I think there's a chance we could see some temperatures around freezing, possibly below freezing. And that's still a concern uh, agriculturally. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Tonight, temperature is going to drop very close to freezing as well. I think we're going to watch those numbers tumble through the 30s uh, later this evening. High temperature tomorrow, pretty nice bounce back. Again, it's that warm up ahead of a cold front. We always look for one, 53 or so. Some spots could be a little bit warmer than that, especially in western Kentucky. Then we get to Friday morning. I've got 30 on the board, but I think I-64 corridor, we could be talking about some upper 20s. That's a concern for gardeners and any farmers. 34 Saturday morning could be a 32 in some spots, but then it's another warm up. We're going to bounce right back into the 60s and that warm up will bring a chance of showers. Could show up as early as Sunday. I think it's a little more focused in Monday. We'll fine tune that. Hmm. But the next few days, though, I mean, the sh we have the sun shining. It looks like Pretty I nice. always hate mm -hmm. to say this, no disrespect in this, but at least the weather is cooperating with the cleanup right. because mm -hmm. there's still a lot of cleanup to go. The weather is going to play along for a couple of days. All right. Thanks, Jim. Well, one of the hardest hit areas in our region from that severe weather last night was Perry County, Missouri, and multiple injuries were reported there along with one death. That's after a tornado ripped through, ripped through that area. News 3's Tia Reinhardt joins us live now on the phone after touring damage there today. Tia, what did you see? Carolyn, I've been in Perryville all day, and the severity of last night's tornado was obvious the second you pulled into town. One of the main project crews we're working on today was fixing power lines. They were down all across town, and community members came out to strangers' houses. I mean, people didn't even know each other, and they were coming to help clean up debris and try to savor any items they could find. Of those nearly 60 families in Perry County that lost everything. Now, tonight at 6.30, I'm sharing a story with you guys of an 83-year-old woman. Now, she lost her entire home to the, to the tornado, but the miracle here, she was inside and she survived. And her family story is definitely one to hear. Now, like you said, there was one, one death in Perry County because of the tornado and um, that had everyone in the community feeling really uplifted and lucky to be alive. Um, they were just really grateful for their lives. And you can see that spirit in my in my story tonight at 630. So be sure to catch that for now. Tia Reinhart, News 3. Tia, thank you. On tomorrow's News 3 this morning, a chance to help pay tribute to veterans. News 3's Callie Carroll has a preview. Coming up tomorrow on News 3 this morning, we're letting you know how you can help with Honor Flight. And I'm on the job helping straighten teeth in Southern Illinois. We'll see you right back here at 5 a.m. Just ahead, the Chicago Blackhawks Black will get a key player back in a trade. We'll show you. But first, the Saluki sophomore makes the Missouri Valley's most improved basketball team. Darren introduces us next in News 3 Sports. This is News 3 Sports in HD. A pair of Salukis picked up Missouri Valley Conference honors yesterday when Sean O'Brien was named second team all-conference and Teague Bowl was named to the all-defensive team. Today, more postseason honors from the league. SIU sophomore Armand Fletcher was named to the Valley's most improved team. Fletcher averaged 11.5 points per game this year after averaging only five a game last year. He also doubled his rebounding from a little more than two per game to nearly five. Evansville's Jalen Brown was captain of the all-bench team after leading the Valley and scoring at 21 per game. Fletcher and his teammates are putting the final preparations before heading to St. Louis for the MVC tournament. The Dogs will face Loyola Friday afternoon in the second quarterfinal of the day. SIU swept the regular season series from the Ramblers, including 
a tough 72-70 win Saturday in the regular season finale. I think both teams kind of, we have each other figured out, you know, it's um, going to be about who's ready to step up and make big shots. And um, we got to play a little better defense than we did on Saturday night against them. They're really good offensively. And if we play the same defense, it might be a, a little bit different game. We got we to gotta step it up on the defensive end for sure. The Salukis and Ramblers will take to the court at 2.30 Friday in St. Louis. Postseason high school hoops will take center stage tonight in 1A at NCOE. It will be Woodlawn and Meridian in 2A at West Frankfurt. It will be a matchup of state-ranked teams when Mount Carmel squares off with T-Town. According to Frankfurt AD Richard Glottich, that game will not get started before 7.30 as the Aces bus broke down on the way to Franklin County. Also in 2A at Nashville, Westland will face Alton Marquette. In 3A, a couple of very interesting matchups at Carterville. It will be Benton and Marion. And at Centralia, Murfreesboro will tangle with Heron. Of course, we'll have all your scores and highlights tonight at 10. The Chicago Blackhawks are bringing back a familiar face, reacquiring defenseman Johnny Oduya from Dallas for forward Mark McNeil and a conditional fourth round pick in 2018. Oduya played for Chicago from 2012 to 2015. He appeared in 71 playoff games, including Stanley Cup championships in 2013 and 15. The Blackhawks are home tonight to take on Pittsburgh. Chicago starts the night five points behind Minnesota in the Central. Major League Baseball exhibition action. Cards beat the Mets 6-1 and out in the Cactus League. The Cubs beat the Royals and the White Sox beat the Diamondbacks. Oh, good. All the good teams won. All, they <laughs> All right. Did. All right. Thanks, Darren. We'll be right back. Five women scientists get immortalized as the newest Lego figures. Yeah, the company unveiled its Women of NASA set this week. Just take a look. The figures include Sally Ride, the first American woman in space, and Mae Jemison, the first African-American woman in space. Also included is Katherine Johnson, whose work helped put the first people on the moon and who inspired the recent Hidden Figures movie. The set will be released later this year or early next year. Pretty neat. All right, yeah, very neat. Well, don't go anywhere. We have more continuous team live coverage of the tornado devastation from yesterday. That's right. We'll be looking for you again in just one minute for News 3 at 630.